everyone, I hope that you're well. One of the biggest concerns that travellers have before they head out on a trip is of course for their safety. And it's completely normal to feel uncertain when you know you're going to be exploring a foreign destination that you've never been to before. And the truth of the matter is that safety can never be 100% fully guaranteed, but there are some precautions that we can take to highly minimise the risk of things going wrong. And I want to help you in this video to feel as secure as possible by avoiding potential dangerous situations. So first of all, let's talk about getting in a taxi because this is something that you're going to be doing almost everywhere in the world and often straight out of the airport. The first thing that you do, the first thing that I look into is to see if the destination has Uber or something equivalent because that will always be my preference. But if you're going to be using the local taxi service, first of all, make sure that it's always a metered taxi if you can and also that the meter is actually working. If there are no taxis available which have a working meter, please make sure that you arrange the price of the taxi before the journey begins because the last thing you want is at the end of the journey the taxi driver giving you a ridiculous price they're really trying to rip you off and they're not going to let you get away with leaving the taxi without their money essentially so really try and avoid that situation by negotiating a reasonable price before you get in the taxi so with that being said it's really worth doing some research online before you arrive to see roughly how much that taxi that you're going to get should be costing i also always make sure that i have downloaded the destination offline on google maps so that when i get in the taxi i can see how long the journey is going to take us i can see the route that we should be going and I can make sure that the taxi is definitely going along that route. Now these next couple of tips are extra precautionary but essential especially if you are traveling alone in the evening. Firstly what you can do before you get in the taxi is take a picture of the outside with the license plate and if you can the taxi driver's license number on the front as well and then you're going to send that to a friend any friend but preferably someone who knows where you are at that time. If it's possible call a male friend and have him explain the directions of where you're going to the taxi driver so the taxi driver knows or at least thinks that you've got someone at your destination waiting for you. And finally when you're in the taxi en route pretend to call a friend or actually call a friend and you can pretend to have a normal chat but drop in your current location every so often as if you're kind of explaining your route to your friend. If you explain any landmarks that you're going past make sure the driver can hear you having this conversation. Leading on from that point, you may have spotted that in order to take these precautions in a taxi, you are going to need a phone and it's going to need to be charged. If your phone likes to run out of battery quite quickly, like mine does, it's really worth bringing a portable charger with you. And in order to stay connected, even when you don't have Wi-Fi, it's really worth purchasing a local pay-as-you-go SIM. For this, you're going to need to make sure that your phone is unlocked before you head on your trip so that you're able to switch up your SIM cards as and when you please. But when we are using our mobile devices, we are also running the risk of online scams so it's so important that we secure our devices. I want to be as relaxed and carefree as possible when I'm away but unfortunately criminals are getting a lot smarter when it comes to accessing our online data and especially when traveling we often just log into public wi-fi networks or we're in crowded areas and both of these leave us vulnerable to online hackers. I've recently become made aware of cyber security and how we can protect ourselves with the help of Zurich Insurance who are the sponsors of today's video. So firstly always use trusted networks if possible and avoid public Wi-Fi networks. You can actually consider disabling your device from automatically connecting. Secondly, be careful of where you are charging. USB connection can allow hacker software onto your device, so make sure you're just really careful about where you're plugging your phone into. This one may sound obvious, but don't leave your phone unattended, not just to prevent it from getting stolen, but also to prevent it from being hacked. So just make sure that your phone is locked with your fingerprint or your face ID, or at the very least, a number password. Disable remote connectivity so Bluetooth, AirDrop, believe it or not this is another way that you can be vulnerable to hackers between 50 to 100 meters away. So if you're not currently using your Bluetooth remember to turn it off. And what happens if you suspect anything suspicious? First of all call your network provider and also your bank if you feel like it's necessary and then of course you can do things like change your passwords to help you feel more secure. And finally what do you actually do in the moment if unfortunately your device is lost or stolen? First of all notify the police and your network provider. If you are able to wipe your device remotely then do that but never try to retrieve the device personally. But obviously we want to do what we can to avoid our valuables being lost or stolen. So let's talk about better ways that we can keep our valuables physically safe. First of all don't walk around with your valuables in an open bag. Preferably the bag should have a zip and even better if you're able to use a padlock to secure that zip as well. Make sure you always have an extra padlock so that you can secure your valuables in the hostel lockers. They should never be just loose in your room especially if you're in a dorm room. But even if you're in a private room 
still lock away your valuables in either the safe or a locker. Bags that go across your body are much more preferable because it is much harder for someone just to grab them off your shoulder. You always hear stories these days of criminals going past on a bike or a scooter or a car and if your bag's just hanging off your shoulder like that they can very easily grab it and go and your stuff is gone. But if you're wearing a bag that crosses your body like this that's going to be a lot harder for them to grab and immediately you are a less likely target for them. Also carrying items on your front as opposed to your side or your back is also going to make them more secure because you obviously have eyes on them at the whole time. So a crossbody bag, bum bag is the best thing that you can have. You can get this one at backpackingsolo.shop which we are restocking in December. The next point is something that I always really like to do to help me feel more secure and that is to always tell somebody where you're going, especially if you're heading off by yourself. So if I'm in a dorm room, tell someone who's in your dorm room, even if you don't know them yet, just say I'm just popping out to the shop or I'm just popping out to the ATM because not only do they now know where you're headed off to just in case something goes wrong, but also you might potentially have a buddy to come with you. You can also consider telling the hotel or hostel receptionist or concierge just as you leave the door because again, not only do they now know where you're going and they can kind of know when to expect you back, also, they might be able to give you some tips and advice of where you're going. And also, if you can, text it to a friend. It can be anyone, even if they're ages away, because at least then you have it in writing. If I'm just texting anyone at the time, I might just be like, oh yeah, just pop into the ATM, it's five minutes from my hostel. Your friend's not really gonna care, and that doesn't matter, but it's in writing, it's online, and if something were to go wrong, this is just more information. And finally, one of the most effective things that you can do to increase your chances of staying safe is to act confident. So when you're walking around town, try and think of having good posture, smiling at people, and walk with purpose. Try not to look worried or lost even if you are because that's going to make you look a lot more vulnerable. If you pretend to act confident with everything you do it's going to make you much more approachable to the people that you want to attract and less vulnerable to the people that you don't want to attract. So that's it for this video. I hope you have an amazing trip wherever you're going. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and I will see you in the next one. Bye!